greetings in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Let's turn to today's passage. We uh, read from Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 28. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 28. How do we serve God? And how we need to serve God? We shall learn from this passage. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 28. Therefore, Therefore since we are receiving a kingdom, since we are receiving a kingdom, which cannot be shaken, which cannot be shaken, let us have grace, let us have grace, by which we may serve God, by which we may serve God, acceptably, acceptably, with reverence and godly fear. Yeah, with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. For our God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah, glory to God. So, the previous verse 26 says, Whose voice then shook the earth? So the earth will be shaken. But now he has promised, saying it once more, I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Heaven and earth also will be removed or shaken. But we are promised that a kingdom which cannot be shaken. So we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Jesus also promises his disciples in Luke's Gospel chapter 22 and verse 29. And I bestow upon you a kingdom just as my father bestowed one upon me. And I bestow upon you. But to whom does he say this? Verse 28 he says, but you are those who have continued with me in my trials. Yeah, but you are those who have continued with me in my trials. Those who withstood the trials. He says, I have hallelujah, prepared a kingdom for you, kingdom which cannot be shaken. So we should understand our position in the Lord. We should know our identity in the Lord. We belong to a kingdom. We are promised a kingdom which cannot be shaken. So how should we be also? I mean, uh, Peter also speaks about it in 1 Peter chapter 5. How the Lord stabilizes his people. There are so many other verses also. But let's see uh, 1 Peter 5.10. Let's see, see 1 Peter but may the God of all grace, may the God of all grace, who called us, who called us to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, uh, to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, after you have suffered a while, perfect, perfect you, hmm. perfect, perfect, establish, establish, strengthen, and strengthen, and settle you, and settle you. Verse 9, resist him steadfast in faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So the Christian walk is full of trials and sufferings, and every uh, child of God will have to go through it. And in that only, God perfects a person, establishes a person, strengthens a person, and settles down a person in him. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. And Colossians 2 also, verse 6, I think, and then we read how we should be rooted in Him. So, hallelujah, glory to God, how we shall be established in Him that we may not be shaken. And also, hallelujah, Matthew's Gospel 7, uh, the Lord speaking about, hallelujah, uh, a wise man building his house upon the rock, he likens him to the one who listens to his word and keeps his word and lives according to his word. He is like a man who builds his house upon the rock. The floods came and the winds blew and the house stood firm. But the foolish man uh, built his house upon the rock. He likens him to the man who hears his word and who does not live according to the word. Floods came and winds blew and the house fell flat. So, oh, hallelujah, glory to God. These are the basic uh, things that, uh, that, uh, that even the grace of God establishes us. Roman Hebrews 13, uh, we, we read. 
So, hallelujah, glory to God. How we can be uh, rooted and strengthened in the Lord. And also, David says, I have set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. And uh, Psalm 125 one says, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, the Lord is round about his people. He who trusts in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion, which shall not be moved. So since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Let us have grace by which we may serve God. Serve God. Serve God means it's not doing ministry. Service, service, service to God. Service to God. So what is the service to God? All the, the body of Christ, uh, everybody calls it, we are, we are going for the morning service or evening service, Sunday service, this worship service. So they just make it into a gathering. But it is much more than that. It's not mere gathering. People gather without uh, a meaning in it, without having the uh, uh, knowledge about serving the Lord in full. So let us, for which we may serve God, serve God. How do we serve God? For before that, uh, let us have grace. To serve God, first of all, we need the grace of God. People take it service to God or uh, have, uh, taking part in the service to God every Sunday. Hallelujah. Routine uh, services to God. Uh, they try to worship God in it and you know, do lots of things in the name of God. And what for? They go to, and uh, participate, take part in the gathering. Oh, if I go, to the gathering, I may be blessed, I may receive something from God. The attitude and the expectation of people or the vision of people is totally different from what, what it ought to be. Actually, the service to God is to, we, are, we have to lift up our hearts and minds towards God to give Him glory, praises, thanksgiving and to worship Him who He is in our lives. That our service to God begins at our salvation. It's not mere uh, being born in a Christian family, we attend church services. Uh, it won't be sufficient. That is not the real meaning of service to God. Let us have grace by which we may serve Him acceptably. The grace starts in our lives. Ephesians 2 it speaks about hallelujah. We are saved by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ and not our works. We are saved through faith and by grace. So we believe in God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah, glory to God. And we find mercies. The unmerited favor of God towards us is the grace of God. We are not worthy to find favor with God, but yet God in His mercy sent His only begotten Son in the form of flesh and in the form of Son of Man. And whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. So there starts the real service to God. When we are saved, saved from what? We were once dead in sins and trespasses. And hallelujah, we were according to living according to the course of the world, according to the uh, spirits of the air that works in the children of disobedience, the children of wrath. But God in His mercy delivered us from the power of Satan and liberated us and saved us, pulled us out of darkness, out of the hold of the devil, the enemy, through the blood, by purchasing us through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Giving his blood as a ransom. 1 Peter 1.19 And hallelujah, we are blood bought. And when we believe in the gospel, hallelujah, confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. Romans 10, 9 and 10. 
we are saved and it's counted as our righteousness. It's counted as righteousness to us. So this grace, the unmerited favor of God, we should never at any point lose it. Instead, we have to preserve it and increase it in, in it and be strengthened in the grace of God. It, it's all where we can read many places. Be strengthened in the grace of God, increase in the abound in the grace of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. How do we increase, be strengthened? By being humbling ourselves. By humbling ourselves, by hum, by being, I know, you know, have, process, processing a broken and contrite spirit before Him. Always, Hallelujah, helps us to find favor with God. Hallelujah, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So we have to have the grace, but not. There are possibilities where people can lose the grace. Even the twelfth chapter, we read about Isa, how he. Afterwards, cried so bitterly and wanted to get back this birthright, but he couldn't do it. Hebrews 12 15. Looking carefully, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up cause trouble, lest any root of bitterness spring up cause trouble. And by this many become defiled. By this many become defiled. Lest there be any fornicator. Lest there be any fornicator. Or a profane person like Isa. 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 Yeah. Who for one morsel of food. Who for one morsel of food. Sold his birthright. Sold his birthright. So that's how losing the grace of God. Enticement of the enemy. Attractions of the enemy. The enemy gives the worldly or his own things how he enticed Eve and Hallelujah and made them to lose their relationship with God and made them enemies of God and brought enmity between God and man. So also he may give a morsel of food means Anything that would take, he would give. Anything. He promised Jesus himself, showing the world and the kingdoms thereof and the glory in a moment's time, promising Jesus that he would give to whosoever he wishes. And hallelujah, one condition was that the person should bow down and worship him. This is what he's been craving for right from. Hallelujah, in the, before uh, he was thrown from the uh, kingdom of God. He wanted to be worshipped. So he tried, just as Jesus came in the form of man, he tried to strike him with him also. But Jesus rebuked him, saying that, Hallelujah, for it is written that you shall worship or serve the Lord your God alone. Get away, you Satan. So he is willing to give the whole world and its glory and its power in place of what? The grace of God. The grace that we need to serve him. Only with the grace of God, whoever receives the grace of God alone can serve the God, serve the Lord effectively. Only with the grace of God, God can look upon a person. Because religiosity won't work with God. You know that from Luke's Gospel chapter 18, two people went to the house of God, temple of God, to pray, one Pharisee and another publican. The Pharisee wanted to show off himself as a just person and he was boasting about his own just uh, full deeds and righteous deeds uh, in the presence of God and were thanking God for it. Whereas the public is voting upon his breast and crying out to God, Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner. He was asking for the mercies of God, unmerited favor of God. And this man, public king, went back home righteous, Jesus says, and not that man, Pharisee, who was religious. Because he was lacking the grace of God, he was depending and leaning on his own righteous deeds and not on the grace of God. Whereas the sinner, a publican, 
Hallelujah. Knowing his wretchedness, he was totally depending on the grace of God and he was made righteous just in a moment's time. So let us have grace. Let us not lose grace at any cost. In Jonah chapter um, 2 and verse 8 also we read that. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. Forsake their own mercy. Those who regard worthless idols or lying vanities. In King James Version, I think it would have to be there like uh, uh, those who regard lying vanities of this world. Vanities. Lying vanities themselves is lying things. But the word of God mentions lying vanities. They forsake their own mercies. So those who regard People who regard worthless idols or lying worthy vanities or the things of the world, the glory of the world, if they regard too much, they are forsaking their mercy and mercies and they, such people, cannot serve God acceptably. So we have to lean on the grace of God, depend on the grace of God. Apostle Paul is the best example. He says, not I, but the grace of God in me. What that, That's what makes me what I am. I am what I am, but by the grace of God, he says. In 1 Corinthians 15 chapter. And when the grace of God will remain in us, only when we remain humble before God, who searches the heart and the mind. So, hallelujah, let's come back to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, which cannot be shaken, let us have grace. Let us have grace by which we may serve God. But by which we may serve God acceptably. Okay, wonder. we may serve God. Now, next is serving God. As I told you, it is a service to God, to glorify God, to lift up God, to magnify God, to adore Him. These are the service because in heaven, hallelujah, the angels, they keep worshipping God and praising God, hallelujah, continually. He is a God who dwells among praises. That's the service that we can do for him. Adam and Eve with their children, Cain and Abel, they brought offerings to God. One brought few vegetables out of his vegetations out of one brought a sheep. The first born and a fatling. But uh, Abel brought that. God accepted Abel's offering and God rejected Cain's offering. So this shows like God is not interested as he spoke in another message. God is not interested in offering as we read, read in uh, Psalm 50. How am I going to eat your bones or your offerings? Hallelujah. Please read that if you Drink want. Drink the blood. Hmm? Drink the blood, yes. Psalm 15. Psalm 50 and verse 13. Uh, 12 and 13. If I were angry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all its full. Will I eat the flesh of bulls? Will I eat the flesh of bulls? Or drink the blood of goats? Or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God thanksgiving. Yes. Will I eat the flesh of bulls? Or drink the blood of goats? Should you do? Offer to God thanksgiving. And pay your vows to the Most High. Pay your vows to the Most High. So offer to God the thanksgiving. Why this offering is, hallelujah, taught to mankind, to offer unto God, to show thanksgiving. So it should be our attitude and from out of good attitude, it should come out of our heart. Good attitude, because God sees the heart. Genesis chapter 6 speaks about it. God sees not only the heart, the intents of the thoughts of the heart of man. The word of God says was continually evil. Intentions only, according to the intentions, 
they were rejected and accepted. So in Abraham's time and all that, they built up altars and you know sacrificed um, animals to honor God, to show the reverence to God. In Exodus, when people of Israel they were groaning in the spirit because of the hardships they were that they were facing uh, from Pharaoh, they were like, they were slaves under the power of Pharaoh. God meets Moses and tells him that he had to go and face Pharaoh and tell him to Hallelujah, let his people go. We read in Exodus chapter 4 and verses 22 and 23. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, Then you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, Israel is my son, My firstborn, My firstborn, So I say to you, So I say to you, Let my son go, Let my son go, That he may serve me, That he may serve me. But if you refuse to let him go, If you refuse to let him go, Indeed I will kill your son. I indeed I will kill your son. Your firstborn. Your firstborn. Let my son go. Israel is my firstborn, is my son. So let my son go that he may serve me. God was interested in his people serving him alone. Hallelujah. Let my son go to serve me. If you don't let him go, I will kill your son, the Lord says. But he didn't do it immediately. After allowing nine plagues, and still Pharaoh was hardening his heart only in the tenth plague. He permitted that to happen. So in every place, if you read to make it short, uh, in every place of chapter, uh, the Lord says, let my son go. And in eight, uh, seventh chapter, he says, that, let my people go. Eight chapter, verse one, he says, let my people go. And eight chapter, hallelujah, Again, in another place, he says, let my people go. Praise the Lord, glory to God. And 9th chapter, verse 1, again, the Lord says, let my people go. So every time Pharaoh hardens his heart, and every time God permits a plague and torments them, and then he says, I will let them go. Then again, uh, to a certain extent, the magicians, the sorcerers, the witchcraft people, all of them, also manifested the same uh, things, but after some point they couldn't do it. Verse 8, 19, there the magicians, what do they say? 8 and 19. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, Then the magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart grew hard. Yeah, his heart grew hard. And he did not heed them. Yeah. Just as the Lord had said. Yes. The Egypt denotes, excuse me, the Egypt denotes the present world that we live in. And Pharaoh denotes the Satan, the prince of the world. So, hallelujah. And the people of Israel denotes the saved people, blood bought people of God. So, what do we learn from here? Pharaoh wouldn't let people. Go to serve God. First of all, that's what happens. Now, temporarily, all the services are uh, stopped, and uh, but we should learn from it how the spirit of the world tries to put an end to the service to the Lord. But people of God should wake up. Verse chapter ten and verse eight. He says, So Moses and Aaron were brought again to Pharaoh, mm. and he said to them, mm. Go, mm. serve the Lord your God. See, who are Moses, the ones that are going? Who are the ones that are going? And then Moses, Moses said, said, We will go with our young and our old. Yeah, Moses said, We will go with our young, our old, our sons, daughters, flocks, herds. We will go and we must hold a feast to the Lord. Then Pharaoh says, Was never made. Not so. Go now. You who are men and serve the Lord for it, that is what you desire. He says, don't go, all of you should not go, you need not go. Only men alone are permitted to go. Now that's what they try to take, uh, you know, hold of the service. 
and bring restrictions to the service and they are dictating terms how we need to serve the true loving God. But then Moses was very firm. He was not going to let Pharaoh dictate terms how they need to serve God. It is for God to dictate them, instruct them rather, how they need to serve God. Hallelujah. Then again another plague. God sends locusts all over the land and then again Moses was called and then again he says in 16, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. So forgive my sin, he says. And then how chapter 10 and verse 24. Then Pharaoh called to Moses and said, and Then Pharaoh called to Moses and said, Go serve the Lord. Go serve the Lord. See, now they say, like, serve the Lord, serve the Lord. The enemy will do anything. He will say, Okay, I love you to serve God. But not according to God. Only but according, let me let me finish. Let, let, but not according to God, but according to Him, according to His instruction, according to His limitations, according to His dictations. That is, according to Him. He would let people to serve God because He also wanted to be God. With the Lucifer, He was thrown out from the kingdom of God before that. He wanted to be in the common, the congregation, and upon the uh, hills, that is where God was seated, he wanted the seat and to be worshipped by the angels. So he was thrown down from there. Even in the New Testament, in the Antichrist, in 2 Thessalonians 2nd chapter, the word of God says he would sit like God in the temple of God. So his aspiration is, was to, is to become like God. So God means he will say, okay, you want to serve God? So if you are going to dictate, if you are not going to serve according to his instructions and dictates and rules and regulations, then we are not then we are not serving the true loving God, but something else, the God of this age. That's why today's Christianity is very, very questionable. Hallelujah. While seeking God or serving God, people are loaded with Lords and lords of the world and also seek God for the world. Seldom they look upon God seeking Him and His kingdom. So only we would we, we, we have to question and doubt there whether it's a true service to God at all. They are not serving. That's why Apostle Paul keeps reminding people and exhorting people that how they need to serve and follow God, follow Jesus and also how there is hallelujah, lots of different gospel and different Jesus being preached in Christendom. Hallelujah. So, here Pharaoh says, verse 24, then Pharaoh called to Moses and said, Go serve the Lord. Yeah, go Moses serve the Lord. Your flocks and your herds be kept back. Yeah, go serve the Lord. One day let your flocks and your herds be kept back. Let your little ones also go with you. Oh, let your little ones also go with you. Let your flocks and herds be left back. Kept back. Something of yours should be in the world for me to have a hold. Otherwise you can go, let your little ones go, but let your flocks and herds, so that they may come back into the world. So he, people, he says, like, don't go, people of God, saved people means, totally brought out of the world, separated out of the world is church. There was, when I got saved, no, I used to read lots of old sayings, the church is a place where it was brought out of the world. But now the world is cut into the churches. Separate yourself from the crooked and perverse generation. That is church. But church, nowadays church itself is filled with crooked and perverse generation. No 
life of separation is being preached, rather it is mocked at in the congregations. So the enemy is having a hold in almost all the churches, sad to say. And God is not interested in such services because those are not the services to God but the God of this age. Because Moses was not willing to heed to the voice of the Pharaoh. He was firm and determined to do according to God. So he said, Our livestock also shall go with us, not a hoof shall be left behind. For we must take some of them to serve the Lord our God, and even we do not know with what we must serve the Lord until we arrive there. So how we should serve God, what, with what we should serve God, it is not, hallelujah, planned or pre-planned or, you know, nowadays they have the order of service and they have all kinds of rituals, man-made doctrines, everything has corrupted the church. Church means, hallelujah, it should be ruled over by Christ is the head of the church and the members of the, which is the body of Christ. And Holy Spirit should be the overseer of the church and Holy Spirit only should lead and the church should be led by the Spirit of God. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. Only then the church will be led into all truths. Only then the church can be prepared for the kingdom of God, prepared as a bride for the bridegroom who is coming, Jesus Christ. We do not know. We have to let God to make us know every moment. We should be led by the Spirit of God. If you don't yield and submit to the Spirit of God, definitely the Spirit of the world will take over even the services to God in the form of Godliness, denying the power thereof. Okay, let's come back to let's come back to twenty-eight. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, and that which cannot be shaken, let us have grace. Let us have grace by which we may serve God. By which we may serve God acceptably, acceptably with reverence, and with reverence and godly fear. And godly fear, with which we may serve God, and then acceptably, the service to God should be accepted by God. God should acknowledge our service. So service to God is not merely attending the church services. Even the church services should be meaningful in glorifying God and lifting up God and doing the will of God. Accomplishing the will of God. Will of God should be a center of the service to God. If the will of God is not preached, if the will of God is not taught, if the will of God is not known, and we do service according to our own will, according to our own intuitions, then God would not be pleased. Because Matthew's Gospel said and the Lord says, in that day, uh, many would say, Lord, 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 whoever says, Lord, Lord, will not enter into the kingdom of God, but those who do according to the will of the Father alone will enter into the kingdom of God. Matthew's Gospel 7, Hallelujah, verse 21. In that day, they would say, many would say, Lord, Lord, in your name we prophesy, we cast out demons and perform miracles. But the Lord would say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I do not know you. He drives them away. They, they call him Lord, Lord. And also using his name, in your name we did all this. But the Lord says, the Lord would say, it seems, I do not know you. And he ordered, Workers of iniquity. Not doing the will of God will make us become workers of iniquity or not doing the will of God, not doing the mind of God will automatically land up in doing the mind of the world. 
that is the prince of the world, god of the sage, the devil, Satan. So we should serve God according to God acceptably. Our minds should be renewed. So only the preachers, teachers or shepherds are there. Who should understand the mind of God and renew the mind of God to the flock for them to follow. But now if the shepherds themselves are blind, then where will the flock go? Where will we be able to know the will of God? Romans 12, 2 says, Be not conformed to this world. Do not be, do not have this world as a pattern to live the life. Or do not live according to the course of this world. First Corinthians 7, the fashion of this world passes away, form of this world passes away. So do not rely on the fashion of this world. So Romans 12, 2 says, be not conformed to this world. Only then we will be able to understand God. But be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Your mind should be renewed according to the standard of God, according to God. His mind is revealed in His word, in His word, through the spoken words of Jesus and His apostles inspired by the Holy Spirit and His servants inspired by the Holy Spirit. And those teachings only reveal the mind of God, which we stick, we should stick on to it. Otherwise, God cannot recognize a person as his own. So the mind of God will be renewed when, when, when it's the Romans 8, 6 says, to be spiritually minded is life and peace, but to be carnally minded is death. And carnally minded people cannot subject themselves. The carnal mind cannot subject themselves, cannot be subjected to the world of God. It will rebel against God's mind. So we have to renounce the carnal mind and put on the mind of Christ. The language between God and man is understanding. It's not any other language of this world. But it's understanding. Whichever language you know, he will give understanding in that language. So this understanding only the God of this age tried to blind with the eyes of understanding. And this understanding was open, but it should be enlightened according to Paul in Ephesians 1.19. So we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. This is the service. We should serve him with reverence. Reverence means godliness. Hallelujah. What are the things of God when it comes to God? We need to have the reverence, respect, regard. And what else when we say reverence for everything? Um, in uh, Ecclesiastes 5, one says, when you go to the house of God, how you should be. And Leviticus also, chapter 9. Please read that. 19. Leviticus 19.30 You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary and reverence my sanctuary and the Lord. I am the Lord. Hallelujah. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. There should be a place. Sanctuary is your own Halloween that we are going to see. You yourself as a sanctuary and also place where we worship. You should have the reverence for it. 
So, Proverbs 28, 14. Happy is the man who is always reverent. Yeah, happy is the man who is always reverent. But he who hardens his heart will fall into calamity. Yeah, he who hardens his heart will fall into calamity. Blessed is the man who is always reverent, who always trembles before God. Who always, hallelujah, when it comes to God, he shivers. If you don't do that, you do not have the reverence, according to Romans one twenty one. Romans one twenty one. Because although they knew God, yeah. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God. They did not glorify Him as God. Nor were thankful. Nor were thankful. But became futile in their thoughts. See, we really have to be very careful. Knowing God is not hallelujah. It's it's again dangerous. We are not going to know Him the right way. Although they knew God, but what did they not do? They did not glorify Him as God. People start questioning God, doubting God, uh, and become angry with God, resist God, do all sorts of things except being reverent with Him. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God. What is, what, why you can't demand? God doesn't demand it. If you don't do it, then there is always another person trying to play, take the place of God in your life. So we have to be very, very watchful and alert. This is what happened in the Garden of Eden. This is what he is trying to do even today. Till date, he is trying his level best to capture the souls and capture the place of God in the soul, lives of the people. So although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful. They should be, should be thankful for everything. First of all, to know Him as God, and know Him, having Him as our God. And all the works that He had done in our lives by sending His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and believing in His work. Hallelujah, we should be thankful. And they did not glorify him, nor were thankful. So what happened? They became futile, waste, futile in their thoughts. And their foolish hearts were darkened. And the foolish hearts, foolishness, the enemy fills the hearts with foolishness, but not glorifying and doing God, making making things light in the form of godliness. And foolish hearts were darkened. It's, it's time to repent and break all the bondages of the enemy, subtlety of the enemy, renouncing him and his wives, turning away from him and turning thoroughly towards God. They seemed to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, birds, four footed animals, and creeping things. So, what people did to Person that thinks there are people who, hallelujah, did not glorify the true living God but ended up in changing the glory of the incorruptible God into a man like uh, image, made them, made them into a God and then like a corruptible man and then birds, four footed animals, reptiles, everything they made into gods and God, they, hallelujah, hallelujah, they could not reach out to God because they made God for themselves in different forms. So God also gave them to up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts. So this is the reason God gave them to wild passions, it seems. So these are the things when we do not glorify God and thankful to God, the enemy will try to capture and God also will have to leave them. And hallelujah, the enemy will claim them because they they sought for the uncleanness and the sins, the sinners of the devil, he who sins is of the devil, the sin the devil sins from the beginning. First John 1 8. So the enemy would claim them for them, for himself. Oh they that's how people, you know, now even now they try to 
uh, exchange the glory of God, incorruptible God, to something else, the glory of the world and the passions thereof, unless we renounce them and I reach out to the one and only true God. So this is how we need to have the reverence for God. To reverence, we have to serve Him acceptably with reverence and godly fear. And again, this godly fear is being totally rooted out from God, people's heart. People are taught about God as God as a compassionate God, loving God, and, and so on. He is compassionate and loving. Or because people are in the clutches of the enemy, the devil. He wants to bring people out of the lost eternity from the hold of the enemy, from the condemnation. So only God sent his only begotten Son with compassion and mercies on the dying humanity, perishing souls, and for them to come to the saving knowledge of God in Christ Jesus. So when people do not want to come to the saving knowledge of God and still want to be uh, the children of wrath, still want to be in the hold of Satan, then God cannot be compassionate anymore with such people. If people's choice is to be with Satan, because self-will has been given to man to, to choose the good and the bad, to choose, choose the evil and the good, to choose life and death. So it's up to us, so that, so, so that only, for that only, the gospel is being preached, the God's mind is preached through his word, and God is reaching out to people through his compassion, through his mercies, to come back to him, and walk in his statutes, walk in his commandments, walk in his word to hallelujah, be with him always. So the godly fear is very, very important. All this godly fear is totally removed. They say God is compassionate, he, was, he would not let anyone to go to hell. But all will go to heaven. It's a diabolical lie. Uh, Jesus himself said the, life, the path that goes to life is narrow and the gate is difficult. Narrow is the gate and difficult is the path that goes to life. Very few will find it. Matthew 7 again. And then great, broad is the way and wide is the gate and broad is the way that goes to destruction and many will go through it. So most of the people opt for the wide gate and the broad way which goes to destruction. So the enemy plays his role continually to deceive people. But people who are thorough the word of God will choose the narrow gate and the difficult path that goes to life. And Apostle Paul also says through many tribulations only we can. In the same chapter of 12 and 29 we read, He is a consuming fire. The New Testament only speaks about it. And also Hebrews 10, the Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26. If we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fearing indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. This is New Testament. Of how much more worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? Counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Spirit of Christ. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. Verse 31, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So if we sin willfully, 
that's very dangerous. So only we need the godly fear to prevent people from sinning against God. Ecclesiastes 12.13 Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. The conclusion of the whole matter is only one thing. Fear God and keep His commandments. 1 Peter 1.17 and if you call on the Father, if you call on the Father, who without partiality, who without partiality, judges according to each one's work, yeah, judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. Yeah, conduct yourselves throughout your stay here in fear. Conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here on earth in fear. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse Hallelujah. 11. Previous verse, what does it say? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Who's the judge, whose judgment seat? Christ's judgment seat, we all should appear. That each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. And it also says, we are also, now we are also not an exception case, but we also are well known to God. And he says, I trust we are well known in your consciences also. Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. So, we have to serve Him. Oh, acceptably, with reverence and godly fear. Finally, Romans 12, 1, please read. How oh, we need to serve God. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, I beseech you therefore, brethren, brethren, by the mercies of God, by the mercies of that God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable to God, holy acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Service. First Corinthians chapter six, verse fifteen. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Yeah, shall I take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Why so Certainly harsh? Not. Why so harsh? Can I make the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Harlot means, oh, we, we think like harlot, oh, we are not into harlotry and all that. But Revelations, if you read um, from chapter 17, 18 and all that, you read about a harlot having a gold cup in her hand and making the whole world drink of the cup, hallelujah, of harlotry, water, all kinds of filthiness. She's pouring upon the world and people also are taking it in the form of all kinds of filthiness, uh, all kinds of defilements all kinds of things that would defile them in their eyes, the lust of the eyes, lust of flesh, pride of life, all things of the world. She just pours it out. The spirit of harlot is working hard against all the human race and especially the children of God should be very careful even this lockdown period, shutdown period. Oh, they have leisure time and people are totally involved and indulged into internet and yesterday um, I was told that there was a survey that doubled the time, how many times? 200 times that um, uh, wrong sites were visited or photography sites were visited and how much more people would have been indulged in worldly entertainments and worldly things instead of seeking God, setting their lives right before God, making use of this opportunity to really serve God in the right way. Apostle Paul even to it so much of ministry says, I discipline my body that I myself having preached to others 
should not become disqualified. He says in 1 Corinthians 9 chapter last verse. So, hallelujah, we have to be very careful. So, 1 Corinthians 6 chapter, uh, we read, again continue to read in the same chapter, verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you are from God and Whom you are from God and you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Yeah, therefore glorify God. Glorify God. This is again and again being emphasized. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You were bought at a price and you're not your own. If you believe in Christ and if you want to be Christ and you want to inherit the eternal life and the eternal kingdom of God, then you should renounce yourself and become the give the ownership to God who purchased you through the blood of Jesus Christ. And 2 Corinthians 7, 1 his promises. And therefore having these promises Beloved, Beloved Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit Perfecting holiness in the fear of God Perfecting holiness in the fear of God See, And of the spirit, not only flesh, in the spirit In the inward part, in the hidden part the hidden areas of life where only you know and God knows. So even in the hidden areas, in your thinking, in your in your meditation, bring it out, confess it to God and uphold it, renounce it and be washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Cleanse yourselves from all filthiness in the flesh, filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Second Corinthians 6 chapter Verse 14 onwards, if you read, uh, there you will know. Having these promises, what are the promises? Verse 14, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That things that would define you. Do not be yoked with unbelievers. And what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate. This is what is genuine life of a child of God. Come out among, from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. I shall receive you. You shall be my sons and daughters. So having these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So over the sixth chapter, the word of God says in verse 13, Let not uh, sin rule over your mortal body. If sin rules over your mortal body, then your soul will be put to death again. So, Verse 14 says, if since you are not under the law and since you are under the grace of God as we saw before, then sin shall not have dominion over you. Sin shall not, if you are always under the grace of God, favor of God by humbling yourself with a broken heart and a contrite spirit and be, be, being humble before him, with or brokenness before him, with a godly sorrow according to 7, 2 Corinthians 7, 10, which worketh to repentance and hallelujah unto salvation. So such people will find mercies from God and hallelujah 1, 6, 22, having been set free from God, having becoming the slaves of God, you have your fruit unto holiness, the um, end result will be eternal life.
First Thessalonians 4, 3, 4 and 5. For this is the will of God your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service. May the Lord bless this word and be with us all. Amen.